I'm Margaret Ryan, Clean Skies News. I'm talking with Jake Schmidt, the International Climate Policy Director for the Natural Resources Defense Council. Jake, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. The bond talks in August, we heard even Eva DeBoer saying they weren't proceeding at a fast enough rate. In September, huge month for climate talks. We have all sorts of things happening. The OECD roundtable, the UN Secretary General Summit up in New York, the G20 in Pittsburgh, and then on to Bangkok for more. Uh, will all this activity move things along? Do you see that happening? Yeah, well, the challenge in coming out of bond is that we have about 100 days left before Copenhagen, and that's not a lot of time to resolve a number of these, these difficult, complicated, tricky issues amongst 192 countries. Um, so part of this is growing pains, um, you know, trying to get countries in the place before Copenhagen to, to sign on to a strong deal that, that puts the world on the path is a challenge. So uh, we got a both mixed bag of positive and negative signs coming out of bond. Okay. Do you think in these, some of these other meetings that are happening before Bangkok, is there any hope that you'll get something that can be taken on and worked on in Bangkok, say out of the G20 when the finance ministers meet, for instance, or out of the UN Secretary General's summit? Yeah, well, these, these heads of government meetings are critical because we need to sort of step this up to the, the higher pay grade in some sense. Um, the negotiators are kind of stuck in a number of places, but heads of government can help to unlock some of these key sticking points. And for example, the G20 is a critical place to begin to flesh out the finance piece of the puzzle. That's a essential part of the Copenhagen Agreement and a piece that's really been difficult to, to make progress on in the negotiations. So getting these heads of government to, to try to make some progress on it is kind of the hope of, of these high-level meetings. What are the key things we should be looking for? You mentioned a financial mechanism and, and give us a little more detail on what we should be looking for there, for instance. Well, I think that there's, there's, key, there's sort of five key pillars to getting the Copenhagen Agreement. Um, the first is leadership from developed countries in terms of taking targets. Targets. Um, the second is developing countries signaling what kind of actions they'll do on their own. And then the third is the, the incentives and the financing that's brought to bear to help developing countries go even further in reducing their emissions. Um, the fourth is starting to curb deforestation emissions. And then the fifth is, is dealing with the impacts um, of climate change that are being felt in, in some of the most vulnerable countries. And so the G20 is, is trying to make some progress on you know, the finance piece. What are the incentive structures to help developing countries begin to make the transition to clean energy, um, building upon the kinds of steps that they're already signaling that they're doing, but sort of how that, that fits into the grander uh, politics is a complicated uh, decision. Mm -hmm. Now, there are bilateral talks going on between the U.S. and China that some people think might form some kind of template for a relation between the developed and developing nations. And we've been hearing rumors of some progress. Uh, what have you been hearing about them? Well, so these two countries are critical. They account for about 40 percent of the world's emissions. Um, where they go in solving this challenge provides a very clear path for where the world's going to actually head. It doesn't resolve all of the issues um, coming to agreement between these two because there's 192 countries in the process. And we have to kind of resolve some of those uh, concerns and issues, but they can clearly make strong signals for what these two major players will do. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a number of emerging signs coming from the Chinese um, and to some extent coming from the U.S. along the bilateral. The details haven't quite emerged, but you know, there's hints of, of things to come you know, later this year, and we'll have to kind of see what the details are um, and, and whether or not they add up to something significant. What about a few of the other big emitters, India, for instance, Brazil? I think President Lula da Silva several months ago said they might be willing to, to, cut some, to commit to certain uh, reductions. Yeah, there's been emerging positive signs from countries like South Korea that signaled that they would take a, a target in 2020. Mexico's putting in place measures to kind of bend their, their emission trajectory. Uh, emerging signs from Brazil, uh, largely around the deforestation piece because that's the big source of their emissions. Um, and hints of things in India um, of positive signs, but India has been always a, a complicated picture. And then uh, China has been sending both mixed signals on what they might do, but I, I'm optimistic that China is poised for, for something uh, to take you know, serious steps to curb their global warming pollution. Will it be enough is the, is the challenge of each of these countries. Well, how about the other place that any international treaty has to play, the U.S. Senate? Uh, you know, what's the outlook there that you're seeing? 
Well, clearly there's a huge momentum out of the house. Um, you know, uh, people thought that it was going to be complicated and difficult to get it out of the house. It, it was it was done and it solved a number of the, the issues that you have to resolve to get a bill passed in the Senate. Um, clearly the Senate's going to take a look at it and, and as they're saying, tweak it. Um, you know, momentum's building, but, you know, we're not quite there. Um, the Senate is, an, you know, an important signal for, for Copenhagen later this year. And so, you know, all eyes are kind of paying attention to what the U.S. is going to do on this front. Well, we have people saying that it would, that we really need to get this, uh, a, a bill passed the Senate for Copenhagen, and others saying, no, maybe it'd be better to leave it open. It would just tie the president's hands in Copenhagen. What's your view on that? Yeah, my view is that, that, that when the U.S. comes to Copenhagen, we are a more credible negotiating partner the farther we are down the line of actually passing a climate bill. Um, <clears throat> when we sit across the table from other countries, I think their first question is going to be, you know, what is it that you, the U.S., the biggest emitter um, over the history, is, is doing to solve its global warming pollution? And then when we actually show that we're going to take the leadership steps, then we're in a much more uh, strong position to, to get uh, agreements and commitments from the other side um, in case of China and Mexico and India and so forth. Well, do you think it's possible to get this climate, uh, the climate treaty, uh, what are the prospects for ratification by the Senate, given that something does get signed in Kyoto? I'm sorry, in Copenhagen. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, I, we'll have to see. Um, but I think there's, there will be very promising signs in the fact that, you know, when we bring back an international agreement, the U.S. will have adopted domestic laws that will do the vast majority of things that we're committing to internationally. And there won't be sort of this gap as there was in Kyoto where we were committing to something internationally and didn't quite have the domestic politics aligned for it. So, uh, you know, I'm optimistic. I think we'll have to see. It's going to be a difficult uh, conversation. I think there's a lot of education that's going to have to occur. Um, but, you know, I think it can be done, and, and things have moved very fast in the Senate um, on complicated issues, uh, not you know, unlike this. And so, you know, things can come uh, fall into place pretty quickly. Okay. Well, Jake Schmidt, the International Climate Policy Director, Natural Resources Defense Council, thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with us today. Thanks for having me. I'm Margaret Ryan, Clean Skies News.